Hey, Pastor Scott here with a word of encouragement. Well, the elections are over, and my sense is people fall into one of two categories generally. They're either relieved and excited, or they are depressed and afraid. Some think it's going to be great now, and some think the world is over. <laughs> Neither is true. You know, I think elections may be a distraction from the real problem. What's the real problem? The real problem manifests itself in the mutilation of perfectly good young bodies and prescribing what are called gender-affirming drugs that permanently sterilize, and all of it based primarily on feelings. The real problem manifests itself in murdering babies simply because they're an inconvenience. Babies are sacrificed on the altar of self. It manifests itself in people who think all of their riches and materials, blessings, were given to them solely for them to use themselves and to enjoy themselves. It's manifested itself in the past by one group of human beings thinking that another group of human beings are subhuman and that that subhuman group should serve them. It manifests itself when the very first brother in history became jealous of his sibling and he picked up a stone and killed his brother. The real problem is us. There's a disease in us, a disease that takes our eyes off of our creator and directs them to ourselves. It's an old school word that you just don't hear that much anymore. Sin. God even explained it when Cain killed Abel. He said, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And sin still has consequences, not just for individuals, but for nations. There's a whole history book here that nets that out. I mean, we all say we want justice. And God gives justice because God is holy. And because he is holy... God cannot tolerate sin. I think most Christians prayed over this election for God's will and his will for this country. We better be careful with that. Yes, God is patient. Yes, God is gentle. And yes, God is loving. And God is just. We see in the last chapter of Jeremiah that into Jerusalem, the very dwelling place of God amongst his people, God sends the Babylonians to destroy it. And he destroys it all the way down to just when there is just a root from the stump of Jesse. You see, sin and disobedience have consequences and they have a price and the price is death. Yet God in his great love for us sent his son to pay that price for our sin and our disobedience. Jesus paid our debt by his death. And the only place that's safe in the presence of a holy and just God is to repent from our evil ways and to place ourselves under the sacrificial blood of his son. Individuals and nations. You see, elections don't change that. Sin and disobedience still demand consequences, regardless of who's in the White House. If you've hung with me this long, just listen to these words from Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in the ninth verse. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. So then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him.
bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Let's not be distracted by the real issues. And the real issues are we are a fallen people who must stand one day before a holy and perfect God. And God has made it very clear our sin and brokenness and our evil has consequences. But out of his great love for us, a just God has provided a way that we may be right with him by his son. Have you called on the name of Jesus? Have you received him as your Savior and as your Lord? Don't be distracted in this season of elections and in the aftermath. That's, that's what we all got to make sure we're right on target with. Be blessed.